Go ahead and let's look now here in um, verse 15 of chapter 14. We'll read, we're going to read three or four verses from the next two or three chapters. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto my Father, for my, my Father is greater than I. And then over in um, John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, how, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye shall also bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Praise God. And then chapter 16, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. <coughs> We're coming into... Um, and really have begun what, what, is, what we call the Christmas season. I know now it's the holiday season. They have holiday trees. They have holiday wreaths. They have holiday presents. They have godless, atheistic, born out of the pit of hell, amorality, socialistic, Marxist mindsets about this time of year. That's my soapbox for the day. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you want to know how I really feel about it, you know, this stuff's come right out of the pit of hell. Yeah. Um, you know, people saying, well, you know, even those who say that, you know, we're taking the Christ out of Christmas, they, you know, the, the traditions came before that from, you know, um, you know, Gothic, uh, Gaelic and, and uh, uh, Gothic, you know, uh, uh, Worships from before Christianity. I don't give a rip. It was Chris, It was Christmas. You can go back with whatever tradition you want to go back to. We we celebrate and have in this country and talked about the the, the 25th of December or the um, the seventh, um, sixth or seventh of January. That's uh, that's Orthodox Christmas. It's for the purpose of celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. What the, what the humanists want to do is remove Jesus from everything yeah. so that they can go out and get drunk and be, and be, and, and be, be heathens. Amen. I'm, I'm, I told Jan, I'm going to walk with the store. If they, if they tell me happy holidays, if I got $1,000 worth of stuff, I'm calling the manager and telling them, here's your stuff. You just lost a thousand dollars sale because you have your employees refuse to let your employees uh, say Merry Christmas because you don't want to offend them. You just offended me, and you offended a thousand dollars sale. How about that one, pal? Fantastic. That's um, I'm just thinking about going to and getting down a bunch of stuff and waiting for them to do it. <laughs> you, know, you know, you offended me. Well, we'll pick up now, <laughs> back into the sermon. Brother Bill can cut that out if he if he feels like it. If not, you can let the world see how I really feel. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we're coming into a time of year where, our, you know, there's people, there's a lot of merriment. The world will celebrate Christmas. They see there's another reason to drink, party, drink wine, get drunk, get lit, get lit up, you know. I mean, overindulge in all kinds of food, you know. I mean, beer sales and all that stuff go up this time of year because everybody's drinking like crazy. I mean, you know, some people drink like a fish in water. And this is just another reason to do it, you know. Um, they think it's all about football games and basketball games and so forth. And, um, but the church knows us about the birth of Jesus. However, in all the merriment and in all the joy, and we're singing songs about good joy and peace to men and, and different things, there are so, did you know that this is the highest rate of suicide takes place during this time of year? More people become depressed and more people uh, commit suicide during the Christmas season than any other time of the year. And it's, you know, <clears throat> with all the people walking around saying Merry Christmas or whatever they're saying, should be saying Merry Christmas or have a blessed Christmas. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the reason for the season, you know, um, <coughs> that there are people walking around with it, even putting a smile on your fa their face, but on the inside they're hurting 
they're distraught, they're, um, they're sad, and I want to talk to you this morning about the, the, the power of the comforter in our lives. We have Christians who are sad. I talked to someone recently, said that they said nothing's ever happened good in their life during the Christmas season. You know, they just, they don't enjoy Christmas. Christian. And, uh, you know, and I understand natural things have happened and things that, that, that and there's just the time of you reminds them of these things happening. And you can understand, uh, say, if, say if a loved one was, was killed on uh, the same day, um, um, oh, of Pearl Harbor. In other words, I mean, you had a loved one die in a car wreck on, on December 7th. Every time December 7th they start talking about Pearl Harbor, they would be reminded that that's the day that the loved one passed away. You know, if, it's, if, it, was a, if it was just a, a normal day and no activity was going on, they would be, sometimes they would be reminded, but not in the same way when there's always a big emphasis about that day in other arenas. Just, it, it, oh yeah, that's the same day my, you know. And people go to Christmas season. When, when Christmas is going on, my, uh, I lost a brother, I lost a relative, uh, you know, a, a loved one passed away. This tragedy happened in my life during Christmas of, you know, 18, uh, 18 something, of 1985 uh, or, you know, 1999 or 2008, something happening. And so they're reminded. And so there's just such, and, and, and then there's just people who are lonely. They don't have friends. Um, and then we, we can get into a lot of them. Well, well, we can, well they, if they were friends, da, 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 da. well, we can get into all that. But the real truth of the matter is we have people who are hurting. And while we're smiling and exchanging gifts and buying presents, and we've got the lights lit up in the front yard, and you know, and we're, we, uh, I talked to another pastor in town recently, one of my district guys over in High Point, and he has 30,000 lights in his front yard. <laughs> And they, you know, the neighbors love it. People ride by his house, look at it. And I thought, man, you're, you, you go ahead, dude. You know, um, and, you know, if I'm going to put lights in my house, I got to I got to go rent a cherry picker. And I'm not going to rent a cherry picker so I can get up to, you know, 45 feet up there to the peak. I'm just, that's not doing it. You know, two reasons. I don't like being up that high. Right. Out, out at an angle with wheels down there, making sure I don't get, I don't, you know, I'm not into it. Then I did got to rent a cherry picker to go take them down. You know? So I'm, you know, but I'm not into that that much. I like, I like Christmas lights. I like decorating for Christmas, but I'm not putting 30,000 lights up. But people do it. So you go out by house with 30,000 lights. There's one over here in uh, Shannon Woods or somewhere in the, over in that neighborhood. They, those people put up, they got to have 50,000 lights. I mean, you know, you know, used to. I just don't know how they didn't short circuit. They must have had to put in a temporary panel. Because I'm telling you, they had so many lights in that yard and, and moving things and Santas and stuff. It's just, it's amazing. But all that going on, there are people who are sad. There are people who are hurting. They're lonely. There's an empty spot in their heart. And the church has to be careful that we don't get so caught up with everything that we forget that we are ministers of the truth, that we are bearers of the light, that the life of God in us can minister life to the hurting. Amen. And that we can be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. That when we come in contact with people, we're not so caught up with what presents we have to buy for our husband or for our kids or for our moms and dads and our children and our grandkids that we forget that we are, we are ambassadors for Christ, carrying the anointing of God to set the captives free. And this is a word from heaven can change their life. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you, before I start down where I'm going, that just be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And then when you come in contact with people, that you, that you take the time to hear from heaven. And if the God says just encourage them, love on them, uh, do it. I got to get to that register. There's a line that's a mile long. I got to get in there before, before, you know, 25 other people get in there. <coughs> What, what, is, what is 20 minutes of your time in line at Sam's versus transforming a person's life for eternity? Amen. Thank you for the one amen. Three holy grunts and four on me and two help me Jesuses that I heard out there. Amen. We have to be sensitive. We, we as Christians don't stop being Christians just because we ate the last bit of turkey from Thanksgiving. <laughs> Amen. And now we're in the official Christmas holiday season because they even call that Friday now Black Friday. I don't know why they call it. You know, Black Tuesday, I believe it was Black Tuesday, is in reference to the stock market crash. I do not know why they call that Friday Black Friday because it isn't stock market crashing. It's cash registers crashing from all the money going in them. I would call it White Friday, Sunshine Friday, Glorious Friday. I mean, Horizon Friday. I mean, you know, take it to the bank Friday. I'd call it, but I wouldn't call it Black Friday. Y'all here? 
Because there's money coming in. Like, you're not, the stock market ain't crashing. The only thing, if, if the stock market was crashing, it's because too much money's coming in. Not because everybody's running on the bank. The only running on the banks put all the stuff into the bank. But now we call it Black Friday. And the, and the official holiday season starts, and people are in, and, and, you know, I don't know if you did it, and, and, I, and I question your sanity if you did. <laughs> But if you were in line wrapped around some building at 1 o'clock in the morning, so you, could, you had a chance at one of the two TVs at $99. Hello. Just believe God. I, I, I'm going to believe God for the difference of money and buy it and pay, pay full price for it. I ain't standing in line at 1 o'clock in the morning for six hours to get in there and get a television. <clears throat> Jesse and Shannon work at the mall out there in Tulsa. Jesse had to go to work at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning on Friday after Thanksgiving. When she got to the mall, because their store opened at 4, other stores had been open all night. They opened at midnight. People had been shopping all night. And my question to you is, why? Do you not know there is Amazon.com? Yes. You can sit in the comfort of your living room. Find that gift and it'll be here in two days. And most of it is free shipping. Hallelujah. UPS guy walks up, puts it on your doorstep, you open it, and there's that same thing that somebody stood in line for four hours to buy. Hallelujah. And you did it in front of your Christmas tree on your computer. Shanda, if you like being out at midnight shopping, go ahead. Amen. But I'm saying that begins that official season. Everybody's out shopping. Everybody's running. There's hustle. There's bustle. They're, at, they're, at, they're, they're, they're out there and they're flipping people off because they're getting in the way and the, and, the, and the driving and getting in the way in the store lines. And people shot somebody over getting the, the present that they wanted because it was the last one in some store in uh, Fayetteville. Shot them. Shot them. Merry Christmas. Boom. We're losing sight. We're losing sight of what we're supposed to be doing. Oh, yeah. Back up. Remember your Lamaze lessons. <laughs> Breathe. Get a perspective. As Christians, I can't help what the world does, but as a Christian, take a step back and re refocus, get your perspective. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. We're celebrating... God being made flesh so he can redeem us from our sins. That's what our celebration is about. And understand that as an ambassador for him, you're to spread the good news. Amen. I'm not saying don't have the presents. I'm not saying no. I got the Christmas. I got two Christmas. I got three Christmas trees. I have one in my main room. I got one in my family room. I got a smaller one upstairs in the bonus room. And I got two in the attic for in reserve. <clears throat> I'm not against that. But don't lose perspective that there's hurting people walking around you. There are people walking around empty around you. And the Holy Ghost in you wants to minister to them. Jesus said, I'll send you another comforter. John 14. The word another in the Greek over there in John 14. Go, just flip back there. Um, John 14, 16. He says, I'll send you another. The word another in the Greek means another after the same manner as myself. I'll send you somebody just like me. I'll send a comforter just like me. Amen. That he may abide with you forever. And that comforter has moved in on the inside of you as a believer. And your mission as a believer is to take that, that life and to take the greater one on the inside of you and bring, bring help and hope and life to hurting people. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And so we are, we are here to understand that there are Christians in our midst maybe that are hurting. Maybe you lost a loved one in the past year. I, 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 I have to counsel people all the time. When you lose a loved one, the whole next year is a year of first. It's the first Christmas without them. It's the first New Year's without them. It's the first Valentine's Day without them. It's the first July 4th without them. It's their first birthday without them. It's their first, the, their anniversary if they were a, a parent. When they celebrate their anniversary, it's the first anniversary of your parents without them. It's the, everything is a first. Your first birthday without them. It's a whole year first. And every time you're reminded, people are hurting. 
There are people, there are people who, who have, that, have that. And we have to begin to walk in the light of bearing the truth and bearing the comfort of the Holy Ghost to people. And even people we think are, you know, they're stoic on the outside or they got, they got that, that shell on the outside of I'm great, I'm cool, I got it together, you can't, you know, nothing affects me. Down on the inside, things affect people. And so we just need to, you know, when God says, get, you know, have a, have a word of encouragement for somebody, let the Holy Spirit use you. Mm-hmm. Let him bring words of life and comfort. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because the, the God's after the comfort of people. Can you say amen? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You know, um, 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, but he that prophesies speaketh unto men exhortation, edification, and comfort. God's interested in the comfort of the church. God's interested in people being comforted. Hallelujah. And you're interested in being enveloped in the comfort of, and peace of the Holy Spirit so that their life is not empty. So that in, 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 in their grief, people have grief. Understand, grief is a process. Now, if it goes too long, it becomes oppression or depression. And we don't, we don't want people becoming that. We don't want them to grieve too long. But you can't tell people, that, you know, you know, um, you know, the scripture says this, we grieve not as others grieve, which have no hope. Yeah. It didn't say we don't grieve. Yeah. Now, you've got a lot of word people come along and say, you shouldn't be grieving. I'm going to rebuke people. No, no, no. The Bible says we grieve not as those which have no hope. That's right. We do grieve. We grieve, you know, we grieve for the loss of Jacob. Um, well, I was with Sister uh, Geraldine yesterday, Mr. C, and she was just hurting. I mean, she was just hurting. Uh, I think five years ago, she lost her son. Um, and, and, then, and then she loses her grandson. You know, and as a parent and grandparent, you never expect to lose your children or your grandchildren. And that's just not something you expect to do. And she, she was just hurting and grieving. And, uh, you, know, you know, people ask questions why. There's no answers to give people that. They're not, they don't want to know why. They just say that because they're hurting. You can't give them an answer that's going to, that's going to help them that way. You know, you can go, well, you, you, whatever you think. Yeah, you know what? We'll, get, we'll have an answer one day. Mm-hmm. There, there are going to be things you're not ever going to find. I remember um, in 1982, I went back to Alumni Week at Raymond, and, and right before I went back, the week before I went back, Greg Smith, which was Vicki Jameson's son, uh, nephew, Greg Smith's son, no, not Greg Smith, uh, Sam, Sam Smith's son, um, which was Vicki Jameson's brother. But Greg Smith had died. He'd been up preaching, preached the night before, and uh, his wife woke up the next morning. He, he'd just been married a short time. He was gone. And so, and then the next week was alumni week. And so, Dad Hagen's ministering. He, he, um, he said that, you know, the, the Lord, he went to the Lord in prayer. He said, Lord, I'm just going to raise him up. He said, Lord said, no. He said, why, Lord? Why, 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 why? He said, the secret thing belongeth unto the Lord. See, there's sometimes there's just no answers. Remember when Dad Hagen talked about when his sister died? And uh, he'd prayed her out of death tw- uh, one time before, or twice before, I forget which. And, uh, but he had a vision, went into heaven, saw her standing talking to the Lord. When the Lord kind of looked right there, she turned around and looked at him and said, Oh, Kenneth, don't worry about the fact you couldn't raise me, uh, believe me and raise me up and keep me from dying. She said, There were reasons. And turned back around and talked to the Lord, never told him why. Amen. So we're not here to have all the answers as to why this happened or, or why that happened. Now, I, I will say I don't believe the Lord had a plan to, 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 to doesn't believe, have plans to kill people. We know the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But as to why things took place, and somebody says, why? You don't have to have all the answers. That's not your job. You know, the, the, the secret thing belongs to the Lord, and that which is revealed to a thousand generations. If the Lord doesn't reveal it, then leave it alone. Amen? Just leave it in his hand, let him take care of it. Amen. And just be a couple, you know, well, well how am I going to help him? You know, let me tell you something, how you can help him. You pray that the Spirit of God, the Comforter, manifest himself. The great and mighty Comforter come into a room where he brings peace which passes all understanding. That the Comforter will bring life. Well, you know, listen, you don't have to have answers. When the Comforter shows up, answers aren't, or aren't relative. When the Comforter shows up, your mind gets at peace. When the Comforter shows up, there's a harmony in your heart, praise God. Just something comes on you. That's why it says it's a peace that passes all understanding. Your mind wants answers, but a peace comes on you from heaven. I said a peace can come on you from heaven. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. The mind, you know, we always want answers. That's, that's our nature. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, my answer, my answer to this saying not having answers is not that God had a reason. There was some special plan of God. I don't believe that. We'll never believe that. 
I just don't think we as believers always have to have the answer for people other than just trusting the Spirit of God to minister His life to them. Amen? And then in due season, if He wants to reveal things to them, He can. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. Well, it's true. The Spirit of God. We've got to have more confidence and faith in the Spirit of God's comforting process and ability than we do in us coming up with an answer that's going to appease their, th- their thoughts. I trust the Holy Spirit. Oh, I trust the Spirit of God to bring comfort. God wants to comfort people. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 1, 4, talking about, look over there. 2 Corinthians 1, actually I have to read 3 and 4. Now, if you're you're analytical, or you like to have answers, you know, your your mind may say, well, I I, got to have an answer. Well, you don't have to have an answer. Amen. Second Corinthians 1, I went back to 1 Corinthians like a. All right. Blessed be the verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them that are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now, that's a lot of comfort, isn't it? You really kind of have to read it this way. When you allow God to comfort you by His Spirit, when other people are hurting, and other people are in tribulation, and other people are in trouble, you can go and comfort them by the same power of comfort that God comforted you with. In other words, you've been there, you've got something to give them, and you can look at them and say, you don't have to have all the answers. Just let God love on you. Let God comfort you. Amen? Isn't that right? Glory to God. That same comfort wherewith you've been comforted. We may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Who is that comforter? Where is that? It comes from the Holy Ghost. There is a power resident in you to minister life to those who are hurting, to those who are in tribulation, to those who are in anguish. Um, and, And listen, I know sometimes people don't let the past go. They'll go through the whole Christmas season year after year after year after year in distress, in anguish, hurting, because they, they've never let the Spirit of God comfort them. If you're one of those in our midst this morning, I encourage you, let it go. Let it go into the hands of God. Let the com- but, yeah, but I don't have an answer. The secret thing belongs to the Lord. If he hasn't told you anything now, let it go. Mm-hmm. And let him comfort you. Some people don't want to be comforted. I can tell you it does no one any service. It doesn't, it doesn't help anybody to hold something in memorial forever. Or if, if I, you know, some women you say, if I get remarried, it's going to be, a, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll show that I didn't really love my husband. If you're, you know, if you're 35 years old and your husband dies, woman, you need to get married. I'm just telling you the truth. If you're 55 and your husband dies, you need to get remarried. Or the same thing with your wife. Jim Zirkel said this right before he passed away. He was killed in the plane crash on Hurricane Mitch back in 1990. What, you remember what year that was? 95, 98, something like that? Down in Guatemala? Okay. Um, he said, he said if, I ever, if anything ever happens to me, I want my wife to get remarried. Because it's the greatest testimony you could have that you enjoyed marriage so much with me, you'd do it again. Yeah. What a perspective. Instead of setting up a memorial, you know, that I can't ever remarry because that's some type of, just, you know, speaking against my husband, I could love somebody else. He said, I wanted to get remarried to tell everybody that she liked, I, me married me was so much fun, she wants to get married again. I like that. Dr. Zirkel always had a good perspective on things. And it wasn't long after that they were killed in a plane crash, um, you know, trying, to, trying to land in that horrible storm. God comforts us in tribulation. Allow Him to comfort you. And if you're not in need of comfort, comfort those who are with you, the same comfort you've been comforted with. Because there are people hurting. 
And if you're hurting, listen, it may have been five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, whatever it is you're holding on to, let it go today. Turn it over to Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost enter in. Hallelujah. Oh, he's powerful. Hallelujah. I said he's powerful. Glory to his comfort is beyond anything. You might say, I can't ever fathom being happy during Christmas or being happy again because I'm so torn up on the inside. But there is a comforter, glory to God, that if you will allow him to enter in, hallelujah, and be who he is. Oh, my, 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 my. What peace, what fulfillment he can bring to your heart again. Praise God. Praise God. It is not, it is not wrong to be happy again. It is not wrong to be fulfilled again. It's not wrong to be whole. Amen. And the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Oh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I said thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, edify one another, even as uh, also you do. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians 2.17, comfort your heart, establish you in every good work, word and work. Paul talking about the catching away of the saints and those who are dead in Christ. Look over there, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Starting down around verse um, four, 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Now here, let me say something. There's a difference between a time of sorrow from your own personal heart of losing a loved one. That, that, is, a normal, that is a normal response to loss. Now when you carry that on and on and on and on and on. Brother Summerall used to say this, and, and you understand... Um, they knew things because of experience in life. But he said this, he said, grief past 30 days is depression. And, and I don't think, I don't know necessarily that you put a, a, a moment by moment timetable on it, but if you're going into two, three, four months of grief, you're entering into a stage of depression. And uh, it, it'll, it, it'll, it'll get you. Depression's evil. I said, depression is evil. It will drive you to, in, to, to absolute inactivity, suicide. It is an evil thing. But Paul says, you saw not as those which have no hope. Yeah, you're sorry. You're sorrowful. Now, not sorry. And, you know, some, you're sorrowful. But you've lost somebody. But he says, don't sorrow as those which have no hope. Why? Yeah, the sorrow that you, and, and the sorrow, you understand what the sorrow is. I miss them. Mm -hmm. oh, I miss my grandfather. I, I remember when my grandfather passed away. I miss my grandfather. My, my kids miss my grandfather. Uh, we miss our, my wife's dad. Um, but we don't sorrow, you know. Uh, we laugh about it now. And we get, we get, to, spend, we get to spend time with him every day. Janie. <laughs> I mean, Janie's like her daddy so much. She's a, her opinions are like his. Her mouth is like his. She knows she's not in here right now. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, 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 when, she, when she starts kind of getting on a little uh, uh, rant about something, we, go, we, like, we just look at each other and go, Calvin. Because you like her daddy. And it thinks like him and those things and, and so forth. Uh, we, we, we joke about it. We, we miss him? Sure. We don't, we don't sit in grief. It's been, it's been several years now that, he, that he's passed away. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, first, okay. Concerning them which are asleep, but even those which have no hope, we have a hope of something. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Well, if you're a believer, you've lost a loved one who's gone on to the other side with the Lord. My, 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 my. Yeah, you miss them. 
We, we don't, we're not those that I have no hope. We had the hope that one day when the Lord returns and we pass our, over ourselves, we're going to see him again. Amen? Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I like that. Paul said, I speak by prophecy. That's what he's saying. I speak by direction of the Holy Ghost that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air to meet the Lord and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. He's coming back. They're coming up. We're meeting them in the sky. We're all going up. Hallelujah. There's a day coming. I said there's a day coming. Praise God. Hallelujah. That we're all going to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And there'll be those who are alive and will not taste death. They'll just be transformed. And the moment the twinkling of an eye, this corruptible shall put on incorruptible, and the mortal shall put on immortality, and we'll be changed. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we'll be caught up in the air with the Lord, so shall we ever be with the Lord. But Paul wrote and said, comfort one another with the fact they're just asleep as far as what you're concerned. They're, 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 they haven't, they're not gone. They're in the grandstands of heaven. Amen. They're on the other side. There is, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You couldn't get them back. If you could, if you could go to heaven and talk to them, if the Lord just gave you a pass, says, oh, come on and see if you can talk them into coming back to earth, you're coming back empty handed. You're not going to get anybody to come back. Are you here? They're happy. I mean, they're happy clappy. They're doing the hula hoop dance in heaven. I mean, it's all glorious, praise God. Are you here? You want to see a side to your loved ones you didn't see before when you get up there. I never thought you had that in you doing the hula hoop worship. Praise God. I'm messing now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you here? So know that, that we, we're not to sorrow as those that have no hope. Yeah, we're sure we miss them. Look, I miss my girls. They're just in Tulsa. I'll be honest, I miss them. Are you here? I miss having them in the house when I come home. The dog does too. <laughs> Our dog is just, I mean, our dog is, she is like, uh, when we came back from Tulsa, she smelled them again on our clothes. So she's been looking for them ever since. People come in, she'll, she'll stand there and wag, 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 because sometimes I'll be in the bonus room and, and Nathan will come in and uh, she's at the top and says, wag, 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 wag. When she sees this Nathan, the tail stops wagging. It's not that she don't love Nathan. She's looking for the girls. Yeah. She, they're here now. <laughs> we can't wait to see what she does next Friday. <laughs> We're going to have to video that because she is going to go thermal nuclear. Hallelujah. We miss having the girls at home. They're not here. But you know what? They're just in Tulsa. Yeah. I miss my granddaddy. But you know what? He's just in heaven. Yeah. Are y'all here? Jane misses her daddy just on the other side. Is that in heaven? Just on the other side. You understand what I'm saying? When, when you come to understand that we don't have to sorrow as those with no hope, those that you've lost over the years, you don't have to be sorrowful during Christmas. You, don't, you can have fun with, at Christmas. Amen. You can be full of joy at Christmas. Well, I don't ever have any fun because I, I, lost, I lost loved ones during this time or I have loved ones that aren't here anymore. I can, yes, you can have fun. You can enjoy life. Let the life of God fill you. Let the life of God permeate out of you. Be light to someone who's, who's on the verge of suicide. Somebody's sitting around right now because, you know, maybe last year their child was run over and killed in a car wreck or, or killed by a car or, or they died of, a, of cancer or something that really bad happened. We know, and it's not comfort to go tell them the Lord did it to them. No. That's not comfort. Amen. That is not comfort. Besides, it's a lie. Right. You don't comfort people by lying to them. Hello. But they're still hurting. But there's a comforter on the inside of you. I said, there's a comforter on the inside of you that can produce life and comfort and peace to them. Amen. And minister that life to them. Amen. So Paul tells them when talking about the dead people who've died. Praise God. We remind them that Jesus is coming back. Amen. 
Here I go to the next chapter, verse 9. It says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. We're to comfort one another. I said, we're to comfort one another. Now listen, it doesn't have to be this, this sloppy body ministry where you get down and you, you cry all over me and I'm so sorry. You know what? Or just a word of encouragement. You know, God loves you. God's on your side. God cares for you. Amen? It doesn't have to be weird. Some people think they've got to get all down and grovel and sloppy and, you know, weep and all this mess. That's going to help somebody. You know, listen. Sometimes, you know, it looks, if, you, if, if, it's, if it's appropriate, I guess so. But, you know, you don't have to make it happen. Just be sensitive to the Holy Ghost on how to comfort people. Mm -hmm. Amen. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. The gray one on the inside of you will rise up. And out of that, remember, remember Jesus said there's a well, talking about the new birth, he said there's a well of life springing up in the everlasting life. But then he said, when talking about the Holy Ghost, he said, out of your belly, he that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, for he was not yet given. The Holy Ghost can flow out of us. We ought to be walking around looking for opportunities to drench people in comfort. Of the, of, the, of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Knowing how to live, that He can do, let me, He can do in a moment of time what 14 years of counseling at $60 an hour will ever fix. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say anything about, I'm, there, there are people who bring you back week after week after week and keep raising their rates and they just have you talk. You pay them. Honey, just get you a tape recorder and talk. It's cheaper. Or, if you really want to get fixed, excuse me. I've stepped on it ten times already. It's because the podium was not right, so someone put the stuff in front of the podium in the wrong place, and I moved the podium. Because I have got to be lined up when I'm preaching. <laughs> Just, if the podium's off center with that pole, you know, I, it messes me up. <laughs> I'm, I'm balanced. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Spirit of God wants to flow out of you. And wants to flow into others and be rivers of life to them and comfort and peace. We sing the song, Comfort and Joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Amen? Amen? Well, this is a time to bring tidings of supernatural comfort and supernatural joy to people during a season where a lot of, there's a lot of hurting people. Even some in our midst may be hurting. I, well, I, we know some are. People you work with could be hurting. People you go to school with. People that are your relatives. And don't get weird. Just be comfort and joy. Walk in full of sunshine. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for today. Thank you that you minister your life to people. You bring them comfort and joy. You restore them wholly by your spirit and by your presence and anointing. Let them, each person experience the comfort of the Holy Ghost and let them comfort others with the comfort that they're comforted with as we go through this, this, this time of year. As we as the church celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, may we as the, as the church be sensitive to the needs and anguish of those out there who are hurting and bring the good news of comfort and peace that can only come from you to their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.